Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Nickel. There is a subtle calming that comes with having a cat sharing my home. They are delightful creatures, but even the best behaved kitty isn't perfect though, is she? When I list the reasons for this love affair, like companionship, affection, entertainment, and a really good example of living in the moment, I also recall the sacrifices that the cat crazy among us conveniently forget like our shredded houses. There are aspects of cat parenting that we must accept, but modern science can make things better. The Nickel family has two cats who don't damage their people and who have been sort of pretty good with our furniture. We've set them up for success by providing appropriate outlets for their destructive proclivities. They have fireplace logs along with scratching posts built into their tall climbing tree. But sadly, and I'm not proud of this, the chair I'm parked in as I speak these words has suffered injuries at the paws of those naughty boys. Exposing the private life of a specialist in veterinary behavior medicine could put my hard-earned reputation at risk. Shouldn't my pets be examples of cordiality and manners? Of all of the cats in New Mexico, shouldn't they respect their home? Well, do MD psychiatrists have perfect families? I don't think so. Well, okay then. I hope I've made my point. So my cats do a bit of furniture scratching and they engage in the occasional brawl. And my dog digs holes and treats our excellent, long-suffering UPS person abominably, although only verbally. I'm sure the poor man suffers emotional abuse when visiting our house. But at long last, the well-being of the Nickel family furniture is improving. Veterinarians are often asked for simple solutions to vexing pet behaviors that are in many cases actually quite normal. I was recently contacted by a 72-year-old man who explained that he'd had cats his entire life. He and his wife had recently lost their cat and, as he put it, he felt lost without another companion. But there was a but. His wife insisted that any new cat in their home be declawed. He told me that he just couldn't agree to that. Well, gee, getting in the middle of a marital brouhaha just isn't part of my job description, but, there's that word again, I had to tell this man that I feel the same way about removing normal anatomy. His concerns are common and legitimate. There are those who insist that cats be spared a painful procedure on one hand, and there are proponents of a non-shredded house on the other. The two Nickel family cats remain naturally clawed, despite having carved their initials into my nice desk chair. You want to do something about this, though, don't you? It would seem logical to correct or punish a home-wrecking cat, but these apparently nefarious acts are actually part of the normal feline behavioral repertoire. Not only do kitties need to sharpen and shorten their nails, they must molest their surroundings to communicate. In the wild, the marks they leave on trees remind their competitors that Kilroy was here. Cats are social creatures in their own feline-specific ways. Trying to stop them from scratching is like telling them to quit breathing. We know that pheromones called semiochemicals are secreted from specialized glands between our cat's toes. They spread these substances in the wild to leave messages for other cats. Never mind that many of our kitties are only pets in the home. A cat must do what a cat must do. is genetically hardwired into their brains. Well, we really hate it when we catch our cats wrecking our stuff, though, don't we? But hurling insults, using a cat as a shoe-throwing target, or spraying water won't make a positive difference. Unless, of course, your cat has caught fire. Instead of breaking your relationship or deforming your cat with declaw surgery, you can redirect his natural feline behavior. We have modern medicine that's not really medicine at all. May I expound for another moment on the concept of domestic contentiousness? The accelerating changes in our society have been accompanied by increasing discord. I've been around for a little while and I've noticed we're becoming tribal. Too many of us were scowls, ready to pop off at the slightest affront. There's a growing number of people who live lonely, disconnected lives, even 
in the same household with a spouse. Having a loving cat is really good self-care. Our bonds with them are precious. For many of the pet parents I've been privileged to help with their wayward cats, behavior problems can be a huge source of conflict. The pets who could be helping their people feel better sometimes cause them to feel worse. There aren't simple solutions for every challenge, but furniture and curtain wrecking, I am delighted to report, can be relegated to the dustbin of history without surgery. Felis scratch, that's F-E-L-I-S-C-R-A-T-C-H, is a synthetic analog of the scratching pheromone that cats feel compelled to spread around their territories. Applying liquid Felis scratch where you want your cat to scratch will make you the top cat, the conductor of the feline orchestra in your home, communicating in cat speak that you actually want scratching and this is where you want it. Making it easy for a kitty to succeed is good cat parenting and better for the spirit than the angst and frustration and punishment. Your cat needs you to locate at least one scratching post, a couple of corrugated cat scratchers, and a fireplace log near the furniture you don't want defiled. Then treat those surfaces with Fila Scratch. Your cat will read the manual and follow instructions. And while you're in the business of showing your cat where to engage in this primal behavior, you can discourage him from using your treasured trappings as message boards. Booby traps like a scat mat with its annoying static electricity will make your furniture an unfun place for your cat to hang out. A cheaper version of weirdness would be to drape aluminum foil on your couch. Double-sided sticky tape is yet another dirty trick. And don't forget that cats are operant learners. That means that what gets rewarded gets repeated. When you catch your cat doing something right, be sure to say something nice like, I love it when you're a good kitty. Avoid exuberance, applause, and mylar balloons. Cats don't need a political rally to bolster their self-esteem. A kind word will work just fine. Repeat hundreds of times and love your kitty every step of the way. I hope you find this information useful. You're welcome to share this podcast with any of your cat-loving friends. If they're considering having their cat declawed, or if their fully equipped kitty is ripping up their furniture, well, they'll be glad for the advice. Each week I share a short video, a podcast, or a blog to help bring out the best in pets. You can sign up at no charge on my website, drjeffnickel.com. That's D-R-J-E-F-N-I-C-H-O-L.com. And when you do, I'll send you my free at-home pet first aid and CPR guide. Thanks for your dedication to your pets. I'm Dr. Jeff Nickel. Mm-hmm.